All the time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate Christ in this absolutely gorgeous Sunday morning. I got here early this morning, and it was so nice outside. I thought we ought to have worship outside. It was only maybe 42, 45 degrees, but I figured, well, the saints would like that as long as the Word of God is preached. We didn't do that, but uh, it is a great time here in the life of the church. A lot going on, a lot happening, so please note everything in the Bolton. I have a, uh, a couple of announcements to make. One is next Saturday morning, um, in conjunction with our Daniel plan, study and preaching. We're going to have a time of uh, exercise and light calisthenics, uh, no more than 50 push-ups at a time. Is that right? That sounds good. Yeah, okay. And then, uh, and so we'll meet at 9.30, from 9.30 to 10.30. We'll probably have to meet back here behind the sanctuary, but uh, uh, come, let Chuck or I know if you're going to make it, and we'll be, uh, we'll be um, exercising together next Saturday morning. Also, we need volunteers for Tuesday night supper especially starting the first of the year. If you have some time, usually uh, anytime around 4.30 to 7 o'clock, we need folks to come and help uh, uh, clean up, set up, serve, and also cook if you're able to cook. You know, cooking for 70 people is the same as cooking for five. You just use a bigger pot. And so uh, uh, come, uh, uh, if, you're, if you're interested in, in helping out, uh, let me know, or if you, uh, Lenore Brockman usually comes first service, uh, but uh, let me know. Uh, we would certainly need and, and want your help. Uh, that's about all I have for you. Chuck, I think it would be a good time to start worship. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going we're gonna to mix things up a little bit, and I just ask right now that we clear our minds and we, and we just go to God in corporate prayer. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the beautiful rising of your sun and its setting and for everything that we take for granted in this world, Lord. We look forward to seeing your sunlight in our lives each and every day. And yet there's so many people that live in darkness. There's so many of your children that proclaim you, yet have areas of their life that are still walking in darkness. And right now, Father God, as a corporate body of believers, friends, men and women, instruments and brothers and sisters in Christ, we call upon you now as intercessors on behalf of all those who are struggling, all those who have cares that they might not be ready to share, that you know the hearts of your children. And we ask that you be with us, Lord, and that you give us strength for this great day to celebrate because you have made it. It's that simple. We love you, Father, and we ask you to be here with us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Dick's going to have our scripture reading for this morning. <laughs> Today's first reading, <clears throat> excuse me, this reading comes from 1 Corinthians, if I can say it, <laughs> in uh, chapter 6, selected verses, so we start with verse 12, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial, everything is per permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything, and verse 19. Do you not know your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Mm. Therefore, honor God with your body. So hear the reading and the understanding of the word. Amen. Chord that David played and it pleased the Lord You don't really care for music, do you? When it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major Hallelujah, 
the secret chord that David played. It pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do ya? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, minor fall and the major lift. A baffled king composing Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You know, over the, over the course of these next few weeks, Tom's going to be talking about different components that are in the Daniel plan and in this book. And um, the Chords Adult Fellowship Group is studying it in tandem with what we are doing as a congregation. And again, you know, when two or three are gathered, Christ is in the midst. Amen. Amen. And we don't have to be physically present as a group, per se, to get the message and the power that Christ has for us and to allow his spirit to speak to us. You can have an individual that you consider your prayer partner or your reading buddy during the course of this study. But I just delved into the book this week following the Chords plan, and, and the first two chapters, they break down what Tom's going to talk about and the question that was posed in our group today was, what is one of the five F's that you want to make a positive change or effort in? And the one that really struck me was, was focus. And we're going to talk about that in a few weeks, but today's is no different. Faith is important. We have to take that time, whether it's walking our dog in the morning or having our coffee, maybe working out. But we've got to give it to God, and we've just got to say, I thank you for being with me. And most importantly, we have to thank him for allowing us to be changed and understand, as Dick read, that our bodies are not our own, that we've been bought, we've been redeemed. And that's a powerful truth.
set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. I'm not who I used to be. I am free. see a movie and it talked about and maybe you engineers and physicists that are out there you can you know you'll say I might be a little bit off because it was a movie but you know the only thing that really is real in our measurements is time time is the only thing that keeps moving and we can't do anything about it but the one thing is time keeps moving ahead and it doesn't go backwards and I think when we proclaim that we are redeemed by God, what that's saying is we're not that person we used to be, that at this point, moving forward, God has called us by name, and we are God's, period. And an opportunity to get started again. And what a profound impact that makes in our lives. And in a little bit, I guess I want to start preaching now, but I'm going to wait just a little bit. And it's kind of like the way that, that we get motivated to do something is realizing we're redeemed. We can start over again, and God's going to give us that grace. God's going to give us that power, but I better quit until I, I, it's my time to preach because this is prayer time. And we do need to lift up... Uh, our prayers to God. We also need to lift up our celebrations to God. There's an awful lot that we need to be thankful for uh, this day. Thankful for another day to serve God. Thankful for this incredible world that God has given us. Thankful for friends. Thankful for family. Thankful for all those things God, that God has set before us uh, to make us who we are. So it's all good stuff. Um, there are many, uh, many things to be thankful for. I guess I ought to bring up the reason for the flowers on the altar. Uh, it is in celebration of Lauren and mine's 27th anniversary. And so we celebrate, uh, just seems like yesterday. Um, the other set of flowers are Abby's birthday is coming up next week. A few more days of being a teenager, and that's okay. Uh, so we, we celebrate in our, in our family a birthday and and another year that Lori and I have uh, spent together, and hopefully many, many more to come, uh, by God's grace. Are there other, other joys? 
or concerns of the church. Sister-in-law, Debbie Rohde, up, up in prayer. Um, she's now found out that she has breast cancer and she's going to have a mastectomy on Wednesday. So I was hoping that we could have some prayers for her um, and just for the whole family. Prayers for Debbie and her family. Yeah. Anyone else? I have a lifelong friend that's... Uh, he has been battling alcoholism, and I think he's got that lick, but now he's out in university hospitals in need of a liver. So if we could lift uh, a lifelong friend, Curtis, up uh, in prayer, I'd appreciate it. Prayers for Curtis. Number seven. Um, prayers for my niece and nephew, uh, Darren and Christine Hosmer. They're in the process of divorcing after... 25 years of marriage. They have two teenage daughters, and so their family is in a lot of turmoil right now. Just, you know, let the Lord guide them through this process and just keep prayers, keep them in your prayers. Okay. Um, just a couple of additions. Um, please pray for the family and friends of Sheila Smith, who passed away this past week, and also the family and friends of uh, uh, Tim. Uh, Tim's son died last week, and it was in a horrific circumstance, and so please pray for, for Tim and his family. Prayers also for John and Charles and for the Slusher family and for, for Gail for healing and also for Marjorie Saylor, um, a friend of the Reinhardts and us who uh, fell and broke her arm in a couple different places, and so she's... She's healing. I saw her last week, and I said, they're, they're in charge of the Christmas thing at, at Guidestone, and I said, just as long as you're healed so you can get all the presents and gifts that, we, that Fields will be bringing you to, to give out to those needy. So she's quite a saint of the church, but prayers for Marjorie. Anyone else? Let us then go to God in silent prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the blessings of our day, a blessing of, a, of another day uh, doing your work, another day in acknowledging and living the blessings that you have offered to us. Lord God, we come here with joy, acknowledging all those amazing things you have surrounded us with, uh, the, the gift of family, the gift of friends, the gift of uh, this creation that you have made by your hands, the gift of this church and all the ministries that are going on, Lord God, we give you thanks for that gift. Lord God, we thank you also for the privilege of, of serving you and the privilege of being redeemed uh, by your grace through the cross, Lord God, we give you thanks for another opportunity to, to get right uh, what you have set before us. Lord, thank you for those things. But we know when we come with joy, there's also many concerns that weigh upon our thoughts and deep within our souls, and we need to lift them up to you. Lord God, we continue to pray for your world and its leaders and its people. We pray for those regions of the world, and especially in the Middle East at this time. Lord God, where there is evil, we just pray that the people of God will rise up and... and uh, and deal with that, Lord God, by your grace, your mercy, and your power. Lord God, we, we pray for our great nation and our leaders, that they may lead with your word firmly upon their lips. Lord, we pray for our community, our community leaders. We pray for our schools, our, our teachers, our support, the support staff. We pray for the children, Lord God, and their parents. Lord God, we pray for our neighbor, those we know and those we don't know, Lord God, because you have called us uh, to love them as well. Lord God, we pray for those who are struggling with the loss of ones they love. Especially, we pray at this time for Tim and his family and the loss of Tim's son. We pray for the family and friends of Sheila Smith. Lord God, we just pray that their grief and mourning may turn to joy with a certain hope of everlasting life uh, for the one they have lost. Lord God, we, we pray for those who are struggling in marriage and and other relationships, Lord God, we just, we just pray for comfort and for healing where healing needs be. Lord God, we lift up to you John and Sharon and Samantha, for Eugene Sr., for Richard, for Charles, for the Slusher family, for Bill and Cookie and Jamie and Julie and Mark, 
for Marjorie and Billy and Edna, for Sherilda, for Judy and Gail, for Debbie, for Renee, for Brian, for Noah, for Dan. Uh, Lord God, we just pray your Holy Spirit rest upon each and every one of these that we have lifted before you, that um, you may heal them in body and in soul. Lord, we also pray for those who aren't with us this day, those who are still struggling with recovery from surgeries or anticipating upcoming procedures, Lord. We pray for those who are, have yet to hear the good news of the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ as well. We just pray that you may intercede in their lives. Lord, we also pray that your, the offering that we lay before you may be worthy and give you glory. Now, Lord, may your people pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In a minute, Chuck will come down and uh, invite the children to come forward. But this is the beginning of our, of our new Sunday school program. So after, after, after children's chat, the children will be excused and be going to Sunday school here right afterwards. And you can, you can pick your children up uh, in the Sunday school wing down the hall. All right, Chuck. I'm ready to roll. Call them up here, Tom. Call the kids up here. Hey, kids. Come on down. I tell you, Tom, you missed your calling. You could have been an, an announcer. I could have been an announcer. And you know what? Here I was thinking, because a lot of the kids came to the first service, this one might not be so big, but this one's pretty good. Hi, guys. How's it going? Good. This is what we're going to do. Oh, here comes another one. Here comes, a, here comes one. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I'll go if you go. That's okay. That's okay. How's things going with you guys? Did you guys look forward to coming to church today? Raise your hand if you looked forward to coming to church today. If you have to think about it, you probably didn't. But that's okay. You guys did really good. You guys did really good. I want you guys, we're going to go around, and I want you to tell me, starting with this gentleman who's playing with this, uh, what did you have for breakfast? Half a pop tart. What'd you have? Cinnamon toast. Cinnamon toast. Sid, what'd you have? Mm, egg, sandwich. egg sandwich. Cinnamon toast. Cinnamon toast, just like Big Sister. What did you have? If you have to think about it, you didn't eat. Okay, sausage McMuffin from McDonald's. What did you have? Egg in the middle. You got to explain that. What's that? That sounds delicious. It's in the middle of something. Bread with, with egg in the okay, bread with egg in the middle. So that could be an egg sandwich. And what did you have? Same thing as he did, the McDonald's. Okay. I didn't have anything for breakfast. What did you have for breakfast? Waffles. All right. I didn't want to. Dis I didn't want to not include you. You guys all every day get to eat breakfast, don't you? You have breakfast. What are the three meals? Breakfast, lunch, lunch and, and dinner. dinner. And maybe if you're good, a dessert. snack or dessert. That's right. That's a lot to be grateful for, isn't it? But there's some kids your age, younger, older, that I want you to really think about this, that don't, if I ask them what they ate today, they couldn't tell me. And it wasn't because they didn't remember but it was because they didn't have anything to eat. There's a, there's a word that we use a lot of times when we pray. We say, thank you, don't we? Are we thankful for the food that we have? Yeah. And we rightly should be. We should be thankful for everything that we have. But there are some kids that are thankful to even have the hope to look forward to a meal. And that's a scary thought, but it happens. And I say all that to say that even as kids, 
And it's our parents, it's a parent's job to provide for their children and give you guys the nutrients that you need. But sometimes it's not that easy. But we must not take for granted what we have been given each and every day, right? I didn't hear you. Yeah. Say, say right. I want to hear you yell it. Right. Yeah. 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 Thank you. He said right. I want you guys to take one of these bags. Here you go. And I'm going to talk about these bags. Don't open it. Don't shake it. Don't eat it. Don't say, where's the McDonald's logo on it? Here you go. Yeah, two more. Ooh. All right. Okay, we have a bag. How many, wh wh what do we call this bag? Uh, what kind of bag? Lunch bag. That's right, it's a lunch bag. We've all seen these before. But this one's different because it says on the front, it's got a fancy blue sticker. It says, end hunger on it. How many kids, how many people, this is for everybody, would love to see that come true, to end hunger? Look at the hands. Look at the hands, everybody. Well, you can't see it. I don't want you to get up. But there's a lot of hands. There's a lot of hands because nobody wants to see another kid or another adult go without breakfast or go without lunch or not know when they're going to get their next meal. But it happens. And what these bags symbolize is there's nothing in this bag for now. But if you guys, I need you to do something for me and for Pastor Tom and for all of us. You take these bags and you take them with you to school. You walk around with your mom or your dad to your neighborhood. And you talk to them and you say, I want to raise awareness and money for kids that don't have what I have. You see, on October 4th, we're going to be doing what's called a crop walk. And crop walk is an international huge fundraiser to help raise awareness to end hunger. All you guys say end hunger. Ready? One, two, three. End That's hunger. right. That's right. And that's what we need to do. I want you guys to take these bags. Pastor Tom and I want you to take these bags and get as much donations as you can. Spread the word that we want to end hunger, that we don't want to have kids or adults not being able to have a meal. Can you do that for us? You are going to bring them back in two weeks. That's an excellent question. You have two weeks. Is that right, Tom? Two weeks? No. Two weeks. The 28th, two weeks. Your parents will remember that. You don't have to remember that. You just need to know the two words that are on this bag. And hunger. Say it again. And hunger. That's right. That's right. You guys going to do this? All right. Let's put all our hands in the middle. Everybody get up here. Oh, my goodness, my back. Come on, Sid. Come on, Brandon. Okay. All right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go one, two, three, and we're going to say end hunger. You ready? One, two, three, end hunger. Amen. You guys are dismissed. You got to go to your classrooms. Good job. Oh, they are so cute. Hey, Chuck, do you mind if I take one of these? No. you mind if I take Well, I, I just said, the, if anybody else wants a bag. Oh, there you go. I'm going to take one. I'll take one. You want to take one? Yeah. I got four more bags. You want to take one? I'm coming in the back. We can get them. You want to take them? There are many bags like this. This bag is mine. Okay. He left you. Be glorified, be glorified.
glorified. Be glorified in the heavens. Be glorified in the earth. Be glorified in the temple. Jesus, Jesus, be thou glorified. Jesus, Jesus, be thou glorified. Worship the Lord. 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 Worship the Lord in the heavens. Worship the Lord in the earth. Worship the Lord in His temple. Jesus, Jesus, be Thou glorified. Jesus, Jesus, be Thou seated. One of the first churches I served went through the service. Treasurer comes up to me afterwards and says, Preacher, it's down in North Carolina, Preacher, do you want to be paid? And I said, well, I guess so. You know, maybe next week you know, I remember to take the offering. <laughs> But you know, it was uh, when we were in Liberia several years ago, you all were up singing and clapping uh, when the offering was taken because I forgot to ask for the offering. But in Liberia, when you offer your gifts to God, the people were standing and the people were singing and the people were clapping because they couldn't wait to give their offering to God. They were so excited about the offering plate coming around. In that case, it was a little pa uh, paper bag, as I recall. They were so excited to give whatever they could. And these folks, by the way, only made 183 bucks a year. But they are excited. Anyhow, that's, uh, well, there's a lot of little sermons here this morning. I've got I, I to gotta quit and get to work here. Let's, let's go to God. Lord, we give you thanks for this glorious morning as we celebrate you. Lord God, by your Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds that as the scripture is read and proclaimed that uh, what we hear will be your prophetic vision for our lives and for this church. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. Amen. Scripture text is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning in the 23rd verse. All things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Do not seek your own advantage. Do not seek your own advantage, but that of the other. Eat whatever is sold in the meat market without raising any question on the ground of conscience. For the earth and its fullness are the Lord's. If an unbeliever invites you to, to a meal and you are disposed to go, eat whatever is set before you without raising any question on the ground of your conscience. But if someone says to you, this has been offered in sacrifice, and do not eat it out of con consideration for the one who informed you, and for the sake of conscience, I mean the others, not yours. For why should my liberty be subject to the judgment of someone else's conscience? If I partake with thanksgiving, should I be denounced because of that for which I gave thanks? So, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. I want to read that one more time. So, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or Greeks or to the church of God, just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many, so that they may be saved. Last week we began this sermon series on Rick Warren's Daniel Plan, and we talked about the foundation of 
Anything that we do is our faith. In fact, putting our faith and trust in something far more uh, uh, powerful than us, far greater th than us. And when we put our faith and trust in God, a lot of things can happen. So this week, we're going to build upon that firm foundation that is Christ our Lord, the foundation of faith by the grace of God through Jesus Christ as we consider something else that may be sensitive to some, probably the any, many, is our physical health. And the reality is, we already know what to do. We already know what we, what we need to do to live a healthier life. It's not rocket science. Basically, if you want to live a healthier life, you eat a little bit less. You eat what is healthy. In fact, in Rick Warren's book, he says, eat whatever takes the shortest distance from the field to the fork. I thought that was an interesting way to put it. Get less, um, less stress in your life and sleep more. That's a, simple, that's a simple formula, isn't it, to feel better? And we can do that. It seems like when we get all excited about doing something like that, it lasts for about three months at the most, maybe even a few years, and we get all excited about feeling better, you know, we're exercising and keeping healthy as best we can, and, and we're all, we want to do that, we want to feel better, but then all of a sudden, the exercise bike that we got on sale at Dick's is in the basement and relegated to a clothes rack waiting to come up to the church in May to be part of the rummage sale. That's what happens when our motivation is based on us. St. Paul writes, everything is permissible for me. It's that free will thing. You see, God does, doesn't say, you can't do this. God allows us to do everything we want to do. That's what they call free will. God says, I, no. you do what you want. I'm not so sure God is thrilled with all the decisions we make, but we're free to make those decisions. But not everything is beneficial. There are some things that are not necessarily wrong, but they're just not necessary. So we are free to do whatever we want to do. That's an odd statement coming from a preacher with a Bible right here. God gives us that freedom. God doesn't necessarily want us to exercise the freedom in how we do oftentimes. So we're free to do what we want. As society tells us, we are the master of our own. Our body is our own. Our life is our own. All the things that we have, we earned and it's ours, and we can do whatever we want to do with it, right? Wrong. Wrong. Number one, our body is not our own. Our life is not our own. God has loaned us this body of ours. God has loaned us the life that has been given to us. God has loaned us the creation. It's not ours, it's God's, and God is calling us to be faithful stewards of what God has provided. In other words, we're God's caretaker. Our bodies are a gift from God on loan. And there may be a day that we may have to be held up for account of what we did. God may ask us, what would you do with the body I gave you? What did you do with the mind that I gave you? What did you do with the wealth that I gave you, reminding yourself that we are all wealthy in this room relative to the world standards? What did you do with all that stuff? But thankfully, we are the redeemed children of God. 
God says, you don't have to look back. I have redeemed you and I have called you by name and you're mine, but what are you doing today with what I'm giving you? What are you doing today with your body? What are you doing today with your life? The only thing we can count is time. You know, all the other measurements in the world we developed. But time is always moving. And it's always moving forward. And God has given us a choice how we would like to live that life. So our bodies are God's property. That's a tough one for us to wrap our heads around a little bit because that's not oftentimes what we're told. But our bodies are God's because God made it. And if God made it, guess what? It is holy. No matter whether you're strong or weak, healthy or unhealthy, tall or small, It's God's. And we have all been made for God's purpose. Scripture says it's God's temple. We are God's temple because the Holy Spirit dwells in us. I don't know about you, but when we have people staying with us at our home, the first thing that we do as a family is make sure everything's all cleaned up. We want to make sure the house is clean before our family comes over to visit. Maybe God's asking the same thing about our bodies. The Holy Spirit's dwelling there. What are you doing? And it's all by God's power. So this morning, though, we talk about, well, how can we be motivated beyond that two- or three-month period of time or a year or two years because we don't seem to have the willpower, and that's right. We don't have the willpower because we haven't connected ourselves to God's power because God's power can move mountains. God's power created the universe. And God's power will give us the willpower. And if we have the wrong motivation, what's the wrong motivation? When we start saying things like, it's all about me, the goal is about me, I want to look better, I want to feel better, That me syndrome seems to destroy even the noblest of goals. We all want to feel better. We all want to be healthy if we are able. But caring for our body that God has loaned to us is less about how we look and feel and more about giving God glory in all that we do, in all that we say, in all that we care for ourselves. And when we give God glory for everything, when we make a decision, well, is this going to give God glory or not? Then we will experience life-changing and long-lasting change. This might sound like we're going down that guilt path. Well, gosh, I haven't been giving my body or God much glory. I went to an event yesterday. I had a hot dog. I had a hamburger. Had some macaroni salad. Had a cookie. Well, how far did that take to get from the field to the fort? It's a good thing about grace. 
thing about God being there, knowing that we're going to fail. But that guilt thing is mainly God saying, well, maybe, Tom, you're going in the wrong direction. Maybe you ought to change your direction just a little bit more. And we forget about sometimes confessing that we've done wrong in how we've lived our life, either in what we eat or how we live or the lifestyle that we're engaged in or whatever it might be, once we realize that that's probably not the right direction to go, then God will give us the strength. There's an official United Methodist Church piece of literature that came out not too long ago, and I read it and I said, there's something missing. Now, I will confess to you that the church doesn't ask me to review anything. When it comes out with this and says, we Methodist people understand that God gives us grace, provenient grace, at time of our conception, and that grace is inside us, whether we know it or not, just waiting to get out. Just waiting to get out. That's why we're, we baptize babies. We're acknowledging the, um, as an outward sign of an inward grace that God's grace is in even a baby. Well, that's great. And then it goes on, okay, we have this prevenient grace, and then all of a sudden God's justifying grace makes us one with God and, and right with God, and, and now we can live as the redeemed children of God, and, and I'm saved. Sounds all pretty good, doesn't it? But guess what? They missed a component. I was going to call the bishop on this. And bishop, if you're listening online, I'll, I'll be in the office in the morning. But there's something that's missing. Because John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, says that uh, you have this prevenient grace, and it's going to stay in a state of prevenient grace. We won't know it's there until this time until God's convicting grace comes on our life. In other words, uh, God's grace will empower us to admit that we've messed up. In other words, we confess to God that we are not the people that God has made us to be, that we are not the people that God intended for us to be. That's convicting grace. And once we acknowledge that, then we, we get this, this justifying grace that says, hey, I don't want to be the guy I was before. Or as the tune that we, we sang said, I don't want to be that old man that was inside of me before because I'm redeemed. You see, so God will work wonders in our lives. If we confess that, yeah, step back and say, we're not doing what you have called, I'm not doing what you have called me to do, and man, I messed up in my life. If you don't believe me, my mom's over there, she probably tell you a lot. Don't tell them anything. <laughs> but God is there to build us up. Anyhow, no matter what we've done, if we confess to God, and God, I want to get closer to you, guess what's going to happen? God's grace will intervene. We need Christ in our lives all the time. We need to open our hearts and our souls to that. And when we open our hearts and souls to God's redeeming grace, then all of a sudden the goals that we make for ourselves are no longer about us. It's all about God, and that's everlasting. And if we follow how God would, would, would have us uh, to live, Thursday night we're studying the book of Daniel. Please join us anytime. Start 7 o'clock Thursday night. Chapter, we're starting chapter 7. It's going to be a hoot, man, I'll tell you, because uh, we just went through this whole part. Now we're going to start talking about beasts with four heads and all that kind of stuff, and that can be kind of fun, kind of tough. But come join us. It's a good time to be had. But up until that time, we started a few weeks ago in chapter 1, and chapter 1 finds ne King Nebuchadnezzar invaded Jerusalem. pummeled the temple, took all the Jewish people and exiled to Babylon. They all go to Babylon. There's four guys, Daniel and his three buddies, Meshach, Shadrach, and, and Abednego, 
And Nebuchadnezzar looked at the four of them and said, you guys are okay. You're going to be part of my court. You can eat the royal food. Daniel said, we ain't going to eat that stuff. Oh, man, one of the vassals of the king said, you're going to get me in big trouble because the king told you to eat it. He said, we can't eat it because God told us not to eat that. It's deep fat fried, a lot of sodium, and high fat. No, God didn't say you can't eat deep fat fried stuff. But Daniel did stay true to what God called him to do. And Daniel said, I'll tell you what. Me and the boys here, we're going to eat vegetables and fruit. Oatmeal and bananas in the morning. For 10 days. And, I'll, and we will be healthier than your royal court. They're healthier than the royal court, not necessarily because of what they ate, but because of their devotion to the word of God. See, when you're devoted to the word of God, all of a sudden, all the goals become God's goals. All your motivation becomes uh, a motivation to be drawn closer to God. And guess what? We were also created to be in community, so when our motivation is not only helping ourselves be drawn closer to God, we are especially called to have others drawn closer in the process. And so we are called to care for ourselves so we can care for others. You see, God will take care and give us the strength we need. All God's asking is take care of the temple, man. Take care of the temple. A couple of weeks ago, and, and this is, uh, there's a church that was burnt down. Remember the woman Lorraine? Keep them in prayer, that Lutheran church. That's always a devastating thing. And, and then we heard it was, it was a, a, a fire that was deliberately set. And I'm sure you and me and many others said, I can't believe somebody did that to God's house. How could somebody have done that to God's house? I was reading some of Rick Warren's stuff and in his book, and he has this story and this challenge. He said, if you're walking down the street, and he saw a gang vandalizing the house of worship. You know, they were busting up the stained glass, just smashing everything up, writing graffiti on the walls. What would you say? That's not right. What are they doing to God's house? You would do all you could to stop it or at least call the police so they could stop it. You, we would do everything we can because we should have respect for God's house. We should have respect for this place of worship. You all know where this is going, don't you? We need to have respect for the temple, which is our body. And so when we make it more about God, when we make caring for our bodies, giving thanks to God, and make that a worship to God, then we start changing the reason for our motivation. We go less from it's about me to all about God and all about the people of God. And then we see a different perspective on what God is calling us to do. We were bought with a price. Jesus hung on the cross that we may live. It was no coincidence or accident that when Jesus was resurrected, Jesus was bodily resurrected. Guess what? There was nothing left in the tomb, was there? That old tomb was empty. Nothing left. But some old dirty rags. We'll talk about that Easter time. Maybe we should talk about that every time. See, God lifted everything up. 
lock, stock, and barrel, our body, and everything. You see, everything is precious in God's sight. Everything about us, the good, the bad, the really bad, and everything in between. God bought us with a price. So God calls us, as Paul testifies in the Corinthian correspondence, to honor God with how we care for our bodies and use our bodies. We need to turn a human condition around that I didn't think of until just now. Are you proud of what you do before God? I guess that's a guilt thing too. God will redeem us and God will set us free if we acknowledge and start doing and start motivating everything in our, that we do to God's glory. So here's a question. If you own a million dollar horse, and if you do, I hope you tithe. <laughs> if you own a million dollar horse, would you feed it junk? How much more valuable are our lives than a million dollar racehorse? God proves that in sacrificing his only son. You see, we're given much. We are given much in abundance because God loves us in abundance. So by faith, our motivation, whether it be this Daniel plan thing of making us healthier bodily and in spirit, or anything we do, that question needs to be raised, am I giving God glory in my life? Am I giving God glory in how I am living my life? Am I giving God glory in what I'm saying and what I'm doing? Am I giving God glory in my attitude towards other people? Like that tune we were singing several weeks ago, if you, if you don't love your neighbor, you don't love God. Well, that's, that's the proof. If you love God, you're going to care for what God has lent to you, to us. If you love God, you're going to celebrate the neighbors that are in our midst. And so setting goals, whether it be uh, for, for better health or whatever, Professionally, socially, privately, set goals and have those goals motivated by God's glory. That will have an impact upon our life. You will know if you're giving God glory because God will give you all you need. Lord God, we give you thanks for being with us. We know, Lord God, that we stumble and fall an awful lot of times. We mess up, Lord God. We have four hot dogs instead of one or whatever it might be. Lord God, we know that. And we just pray your, your forgiving grace upon us for, for things that simple or, or even far more insidious than those things, Lord God. It doesn't matter because you'll lift us up no matter how far we have fallen down, you will lift us up. Help us be motivated uh, to live our lives, recreate our lives uh, back to your image by your grace and your power, knowing that we are your redeemed and you have called us by name. Help us to be motivated to give you glory in all that we do. Let the people of God say, Amen. All right. Amen. Yeah, like I said earlier today, you know, the first two chapters of, of Warren's book, he touches and revisits a lot of points that I am pretty confident for those of us that are in the CORD study, when we did the Purpose Driven Life study, he's, he's reiterating some truths that were, that were already mentioned um, earlier, and, and you know, a lot of authors do that. They build off of what they've previously mentioned, but one thing that um, struck me as Tom began his sermon today was, you know, we have to dig and Warren talks about this, we have to dig to the root of the matter. We have to dig deep, and that's spiritual. There's nothing else to it. A diet, of course, 
can be spiritual and physical. We can have more spiritual food in our lives, i.e. reading God's word that much more. But it takes a sp spiritual inventory to dig to the root of the problem. Where did this start? Where did it all go wrong? And that's where faith comes in because we have to believe that God is who he says he is and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen? Amen. Stand with us as we close with Hosanna, praise is rising. Miss Judy. This is a tough one to clap to, but I'm going to see if you guys can do it. That's it. Put them together. We've got to keep them together, though. Here we go. One, two, three. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna. Come and you lay upon us. Welcome to heal, Lord Jesus. Lost that clap. Where is it at? There it is. Keep it going. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. We turn to you. In your kingdom broken. creation. Behold, everything that is in front of us from this moment forward, from the day that we accepted you into our lives, but especially right now, it's been made new in Christ. Amen? Amen. Say, I've been made new. I've been I've made been new. new. In Christ. In Christ. Hallelujah. I am not the same, and we will be that much more like him if we seek him with all our hearts and exercise faith. So as we send each other on our way, let's say Hosanna, praise is rising one last time. Here we go. Ready? One, here we go. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Singing Hosanna, Hosanna. Come have your way upon us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Come have your way upon us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Father, send us on our way with our hearts filled with joy and eager expectation for all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, all of God's children said, Amen. Have a great week, everybody. Have a great week.